What's going on, my gamers and ballers? We are back at it again. This right here, season two, episode twenty-nine. Shots fired, your man Vince Chang, aka the Energy, and woo! It's been a crazy couple of weeks. You already know. FIBA has changed the game when it comes to international basketball. And the USA is one of them people that was on top and now they dropped. And I don't know what's going to happen for future basketball, but we got a great show for you. As you already know, we're live here on Twitch, but also I see on YouTube, it's also insane. Thank you guys for coming through. I need to know who's watching. What's up, Dan? Uh, Wamet, what's going on? There's something in Arabic that I cannot understand. So Sabaka hair, I can't do it, um, you know, but everything things good before we get started usually you already know how we start the, the whole show off we have talent overload and the breaking news but we got someone very 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 special okay she's all the way in spain right now the wifi is crazy okay it's not like france you know chocolate blue miss able cool but it's a little different over there so we're gonna start the show with the interview so that's how we're gonna do for this episode of shots fired so before we get it let's get the graphic this is the guest interview on shots fired let's go So, if you already know, we get amazing guests. I mean, we had a former NBA player, Gary Forbes, okay? Then we also had the amazing Harlem Globetrotters. We got Manny Love. But now we have another baller. This woman right here has blew my mind of what she did. Her dream was to play for the Olympics, to represent USA. She played Division I basketball in California, but however... Her dreams were a little bit halted because the USA didn't give her the call. So instead, she put matters in her own hands. She went to Uganda, got citizenship. I didn't know you could do that. And then played for the national team right there for the FIBA Zone 5 qualifiers in Africa. This woman can ball. She is Janet Otto, not Otto, Otto, because that's what they call her over in Uganda. Watch this hype video, and I can't wait to have it on. Let's see it. Jenny, we got you. We've been going back and forth with the Wi-Fi, but how you doing, girl? Oop, can you hear me? Oh, I don't know if she can hear me. Can you hear me? Jenny, you there? Hey, no, no. I think we had her, but now she's gone. Jenny, are you there? Jenny, can you see me? Uh-oh, I don't know if she can hear me. Technical difficulties. I did say she was in Spain with the Wi-Fi. Can you hear me? Hello, are you there? Are you there? I'm gonna text her. Uh, she's got the face on. She looks like, okay, put, put, put the mute on. Press the button. Press the button. She, oh, Lord, everybody, we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. Uh, Katie, and, yeah, that would be a crazy. All right, Danny, can you, cause she's right there. She's right there. Can you hear me, Sasha? Okay, I don't know if she can see me, but she came in and out. We're gonna get her back. Like I said, her Wi Fi has been weird. But can you hear me? I was just talking to her, my gamers and ballers. Can you hear me? Or see me? Or are you there? Because I can say something. Say something. Just speak. Speak. Nothing. We had her. We had her, everybody. I was so happy. Yeah, yeah. Her, she's a very emotional person because I hear her, I can see it in her face. But she's right there. She's right there. Hold on. I think she connected to it. I, I, I don't know what we're waiting for. Hey, hey. All right, we're gonna, I'm sending her a message. Oh no. Uh, press the microphone button. <laughs> okay, I'll say. There we go. All right, okay, there we go. She's gonna log in and out again. Y'all gonna want to hear her story. Like I said, played in California, top of her class, a dominant beast. Um, maybe she's back again. Can she hear me now? We don't know. Nope. She's just there. Just, 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 just all her glory right there. We're, we're going to, we're going to do this. Uh, uh, log. Well, I think that's her. Unless that was my, my engineer. I heard something. 
Log <laughs> and out. We heard you. We heard you. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I saw the green. I saw the green. Okay, she's going to log in and out, and she'll be right back. But anyway, this is a little overview on who she came from. Like I said, she was trying to play for the national team in the USA. What happened was, again, playing at, you know, U.S. US uh, uh, Riverside, she definitely did damage over there. Oh, there we go. Yes, we figured it out. I told you. It's just the Lord and the gods of the Wi-Fi. I don't know how long I got you. Janet, how you feeling? I'm, we're stressed, but you know, it's okay. We're, we're, we're figuring it out. <laughs> we're figuring it out right now. I know you're in Spain. You just came back, you know, from a crazy Africa Zone 5 tournament. And I got a lot of questions about that. But before we get started, I need to ask a question I ask all my guests when they come on the show, Shots Fired. Do you remember the first memory that involved basketball in your life? The first memory, I just remember always going to the gym with my mom because my mom was a coach, so she would just bring me along to the gym and just watching like the older girls play and just wanting to be like, just wanting to be like them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just I want to be like Mike, I want to be like them ladies over there, <laughs> them queens. <laughs> so I did a little research on you. I mean, you're from California and you have a crazy resume when it comes to balling. I mean, four years varsity, three-time champion, also incredibly smart. Everyone, she was the valedictorian of the 2015 class with a 4.33. Walk me through being a three-time champion in high school and being so talented and smart in the classroom. Um, yeah, I mean, high school is crazy, of course. I feel like you're just so focused. You're trying to get to the next level. So just like doing as much as you can, time management, just trying to get classes, do training, do everything, you know? So that's just like a whirlwind, I, mm -hmm. I would say. But great experience. I love playing with my teammates in high school. It's so much fun and we did all right. So that was good too. <laughs> All right, you were three-time champion. Also, you were breaking records here and there. I mean, you were first all-team in uh, Bernardino County in 2015. And then also, you went to the All-Star game. I mean, you literally were the epitome of a WNBA player waiting to come out of California. But you also went to a Division One school in New Mexico first, before you went to UC. What was like playing at the University of New Mexico? Yeah, I mean, the fans there are insane. That's like, I think the thing that draws everyone there is like playing in the pit and with the fans. And it's a big college town. So that was just a great experience playing for them and being out of state finally, like being somewhere else with basketball is really cool. Oh, I mean, that's always, I mean, I never left my state. I ain't gonna lie. I played in <laughs> New York. So I know that feeling when you get outside, you're like, yo, I'm gonna get away yeah. from mama. I'm gonna get away from everybody. So different. Yeah. But then your career went to a different level because then you went to Riverside. Now, that is an amazing, amazing school. And then you played in 28 games in 2018. I mean, you, you also got accolades in 2017. I'm going backwards because you redshirted in 2016. <laughs> so before I get all these accolades going yeah. up to 2018 to 17, uh, what was the reason for you redshirting? Was it because of the trade or anything else? Yeah, because tra transfer rules then, you have to sit out a year, so. Oh, man, we don't got that anymore, but then. Uh, Not anymore. <laughs> it's nice now, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, so, I mean, you were a shooter. You were averaging 9.2 points a game. I mean, you were just a beast when it comes to rebounding and all around playing. Um, Now, once you were at that Division One level, tell me about, because I know you wanted to play for the Olympics, what was your feeling every year going to, you know, this school saying, you know what, am I going to go to the WNBA? Did you have like talks with the WNBA or are you just concentrating on college? Um, at the time, I didn't really. I didn't even really think about playing professionally. I kind of just was like, let me just stay in the moment and just see what happens. Because, I mean, Riverside's like a mid-major, so it's not really like a powerhouse or SEC, <laughs> Power 5, you know? So you're yeah. kind of just like go with the flow, get a good degree, you know, and then it kind of came later, I would say, <laughs> later in my career, so. <laughs> I mean, late in career, but then it finally came because this is one of the main reasons I really want to get you on the show. Because during <laughs> all of this, um, we had a guy named Gary Forbes. He, he was in the NBA, played for the Raptors and the Nuggets. And from what I know, you actually have diabetes. You have type one diabetes. So yeah, you had yeah. a 
a little something that kind of puts you in some people's mind behind everyone else, but that never stopped you because you were dominated on the court. You know, explain to the people that are watching, what's that like having, you know, this quote unquote disease and then playing basketball because you always got to check your sugar levels and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, it's very, I would say it's probably the most stressful thing because when I'm not playing basketball, my levels are usually good. Like <laughs> you're, it's a lot easier to manage when you're not active. So like yeah. being active all the time is like, you have to really be on top of it, really checking everything, watch what you eat. Mm -hmm. Like that's my problem yesterday, like in the game before, like I'm taking a whole bunch of juice, like trying to get my blood sugar to go up and just like, it's other things that like most players don't have to think about. So mm -hmm. it's like another added like, la like layer, I guess. So that was yeah. like my issue first professionally was like getting a contract because I was like, oh, she's diabetic. Like, mm -hmm. we don't know if we can take that risk. Like, we don't know how that will work. Like, we don't know if we have the infrastructure to take care of that, you know? So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, now it's my fourth year and I feel like teams are more like, like, oh, she can play with it. Like she's able to play with it and manage it just fine. So it's like, I've liked that. Like I've like seen that, like how it's grown and just become like more accepted of yeah. amongst the teams that I've been talking to. So that's been really cool because many people have it. It's a common mm. thing, you know? So I yeah. like that it's talked about and yeah. <laughs> I mean, you put it in the forefront because then also you're such a, you know, a hero when it comes to this quote unquote, like, detrimental disease which is again yeah. you're proving that you can play with it i mean and you're not the only one that has it and it shows other young women that yeah you may have this just be disciplined and you can be successful which you have been because last time i checked you were in luxembourg playing at the, the what the muscle pikes but like, that was yeah. like, you were overseas i mean you were a professional basketball player what was it like playing in luxembourg though yeah, Luxembourg's crazy because it's so small. Like the year where I was in Germany, so we were right next door to it. But it's kind of like Luxembourg's just seems like a stopover between France and Germany. It's so small and like just so few people. But it was I love I liked it a lot. Everyone spoke English, so that was really nice. It's like the toughest thing when you're overseas is not being able to talk to people. So mm -hmm. I feel like that was like a great place to be in for that because everyone spoke English and just was, everyone's always great people, you know. Yeah. Oh, trust me. And then the thing is that with your personality, and if I want to see some other pictures, Sasha, put some other pictures of this young woman right here, because you're <laughs> so animated on the court. And also you <laughs> let your feelings be expressed. I mean, you're smiling right now and we're talking about you, which is amazing, but you never <laughs> stop, you know, being yourself, which I love. And I want to know where does all this positivity come from? Is it something inside or it's just, it just happening? You're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna be happy all the time. I mean, I just feel like that's one of, I feel like everyone has something they bring to the game and I just feel like I bring like energy, like that's mm -hmm. kind of like what I bring to the court and just kind of all over the place. So I feel like I have to have like a, <laughs> even if it's not good energy, just saying something, talking, like clap my teammates, you know, high fives, like whatever it is, I just like I have to, like, I feel like it helps me personally too if I'm like, you know, happy to be there, like I feel like we're so blessed. Like it's crazy to be playing basketball as a job, you know? Yeah. Like so many people would be like, even if it's not great money, whatever, like whatever, you're still playing, like you're doing what you love as a job. So what, what more could you want? You know, like, why would you be upset or, or sad or, you know, like <laughs> just bring good energy. That's like, you get good things out of it, so. I mean, of course, I mean, they call me the energy too. And then when someone like us <laughs> walks in a room out of 10 people, we're going to make eight of them smile. We don't give a damn <laughs> yeah. about the other two. They could be haters all they want. <laughs> um, yeah, by themselves. <laughs> exactly. But then you did something that was incredible because you tried to play for our national because you are American. And then somehow, please explain this. You became a registered Ugandan citizen in February, like not February last year, but like this February past. <laughs> I need to know. Now, there was a picture, and I want Sasha to put it back, about you on this Ugandan team, and you'll see it in post. And I'm telling you, everyone is beautiful chocolate. But then we got a <laughs> macadamia nut just right there, just going. <laughs> One of these things just doesn't belong here. So <laughs> I kind of want to know, what was the process getting the citizenship and then also, <laughs> what made you choose Uganda? Yeah, um, it's kind of, I just feel like it's a series of coincidences, but okay. like everything lined up mm -hmm. and my agent knows the coach. So it, the coach is Spanish and my agent's Spanish. So they just 
knew each other. Yeah. They were like, oh, like Uganda's looking for a player to naturalize. Like, would you do it? And at first I'm like, like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> you know, you're just like, what? Like, what do you mean Uganda? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you like, who's this? Like, what are they about? Like, what's all this stuff? And just have so many questions, but yeah. like, I don't know. Once, once I really started thinking about it, I'm like, what? Like, why wouldn't you do it? You know, like, why would you not? Like, that's like a, the opportunity of a lifetime, you know? And just like, I go to Africa. Like, when else would I go to Africa? Am I like, really? Like, you know what I'm saying? When else would I get to go to that continent, see like the, how beautiful it is, see the people there? Like, yep. And that's, I just feel like really blessed that I did like take the chance because it was kind of like maybe risky for some people. Like, I don't, I don't know how, like, you know, because it's like, oh, I. I don't know much about it but mm -hmm. like they're like the most beautiful people i've ever met the most warm welcoming like every time i'm there i love going back like i wish i could be there more almost like <laughs> i just like i'm so happy that i did like that this opportunity was presented to me because just it's like changed my life i would say yeah i mean that's it also they were saying um otto not otto um otto or otto was uh, yeah. an ancholi name <laughs> Yeah, so everybody yes. loved you there, and and I see the warm like, and I can only imagine how it was on the court because you know talking to you know Vicky uh, Nasolo, you know she was a team manager of the Gazelles, and again she lo she loves you, she protects you all the time. Oh, girl. Yeah, that's your yes, girl, right? Love her. And I've yes. seen the interviews, <laughs> and you were so you were welcomed with so much open arms, mm -hmm. and and you would I mean I think I read a, a story that. You were walking through the streets and you were like questioning like what's gonna happen because you want to get your mom a magnet. That's what you say. Your mom loves yeah. magnets. Oh, I do my research. Yeah. I do my but <laughs> how was it a culture shock, you know, coming from California yeah. and just getting dumped into Uganda? Because this is in East Africa and it's literally the pearl of Africa, which the number one thing they have is the most yeah. mountain gorillas worldwide. That's what they're known yeah. for, which is crazy. Yeah. So walk me through that. How was that with the culture shock? Yeah, like just, I don't know. I feel like in the States, we're so like isolated and like we do our own thing. We don't want to be in people's business. And like <laughs> there, I feel like they're completely opposite. Like everyone's in your business, like not in a bad way, of course, yeah. but everyone's in your business, asking <laughs> every question, just like everyone's so warm to you. Like if you need anything, they'll help you as best they can, get whatever, like it's just completely different like community wise like yeah. i feel like they build community so much better than how i've experienced community in the past like they're yeah. just that's i feel like the team just gelled together so quickly like everyone's just they everyone just wants like they really care i feel like so they're just helping you as much as they can like yep i don't know and just like the thing though that shocked me the most is just the traffic like <laughs> and then you see in the movies, like in India, where they're like on the bikes and motorcycles everywhere, cars going every direction. <laughs> and that's literally how it was. Like, I was shocked. I thought I was gonna get in a car crash every time I went, but we, we never did, not even close, but <laughs> they're driving. It was insane. Like, I'm like, I can't, I would never be able to drive there. That's one thing. <laughs> no, it's safe to say, you're saying that Africans are the best drivers in the world, okay? They <laughs> are, they are. Because there was Tokyo no Drift. accidents ever, <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, I'm impressed. I was, I'm impressed with it because I was, I, was, I was reading about that too. You know, every day you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, you're too close, you're too close. But, <laughs> now, you were also, and that was in Kampala, right? The capital of Uganda? Yeah, yep. Oh. Now, tell me about the foods. Because I, I, I know you being a diabetic, you got to be careful <laughs> with foods. But I've learned that, for example, I'm lactose intolerant. I eat some yeah. cheese. I'm boo-booing for three days. Like, I'm not leaving my apartment. <laughs> but... When I go to Italy and I have that cheese, I'm fine. So mm, did you really have to true. watch your foods over there? Cause you don't know what the foods are or could you eat anything you want kind of? I mean, the food, like the same thing. Like I feel like the food tastes so much better there. Like so much fresher, like everything. I was like, this is perfect. Like I'll move here. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, I don't know. Just, I would say like stuff with like posho. Like I didn't know what posho was, it's like <laughs> corn basically okay. like mushed up corn yeah and like stuff like that you just like i don't know how many carbs is in that like as a diabetic i'm supposed to be counting carbs but i'm like yeah. i have no idea like i'm just freestyling it because mm -hmm. who knows but like yeah everything was really good the food was great like <laughs> probably better than in the states like you said <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome so do you have like a um a most founding memory 
off the court being in Uganda? Because before we continue, we got people in the chat on YouTube. Uh, Arnold Mugabe saying that uh, you're an inspiration. Walter says you're Ugandan. That's it. That's it. You're, you're not American no more. You're part of the culture. <laughs> like, do you have like a, a astounding memory being over there and playing for that team off the court, though, not on the court? Off the court. Just like. I have fans, I know it's kind of still on the court, but like with the fans, just like everywhere they go, like everywhere we go, they're like literally like asking us how we are, asking us like, just like how, I don't know how to describe, like you have to see it yourself kind of, mm -hmm. but they're just so like, how passionate they are about women's sports kind of like, oh, nice. it changes my whole perspective of things. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. when I'm on Instagram, I'm like everyone's so negative, like all oh, about a WNBA post, they're like, oh, like mm -hmm. saying all these like, misogynistic thing and the people there are like fully supportive of women and like want them to do as, like, want us to do as best as we can just like everything we need they're there like cheering in the stands like making signs for us in the stands like doing it's just insane like the complete like difference in how they support women i just love it so much and i'm just i don't know that's like my fondest memory for sure is just the support that they give to us I mean, that's what I love to hear. And I know you guys made it to the finals in the FIBA Zone Five, um, zone five qualifiers. And I know you really wanted to win that. But you played against Egypt. And I do have a soft spot for, I think you may know her, Soraya Muhammad. Um, yeah, amazing <laughs> point guard. What was that yeah. game like? Because Egypt, they're a pretty tough cookie. But I know you guys fought. But what was the game like over there? Yeah. And they have some, Egypt has some really good shooters. So just... In zone five, we played with all of our local, like, Ugandan players. So that was, it's a bit tougher just because they have, like, Soraya and the shooter. Like, they have a couple shooters who just knock everything down. So yeah. it was really tough just to, to guard everyone. I feel like you have to guard everyone on that team. Their big girl is really good as well. So it's just, like, that was a tough game. I think we ended up losing by, like, nine or something. Yeah, it's close. close but mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, tough playing against them all the time. Well, I mean, that's it. But you definitely showed out. And your talent, because you have a Division One caliber, going to Uganda, and Uganda haven't been there for, like, two trips. It's been a while since they got that far. And, again, they praised you in, again, so many different articles. Like, you scored 87 points in five games. You were grabbing every rebound, you know, you could. And, you know, even the captains and your teammates, they all said, yo, this woman's a difference maker, including your coach. Um, I want to know when you landed and your teammates saw you, you already said the community was excited just to have women basketball players. What was it like? Were you like haze, quote unquote, because you're the newbie? Or it was like, nah, this, this chick is nice, so we're going to treat her like LeBron. Like, what, what was that like? Um, in qualifiers, I literally landed the same day we played. So that was like same thing like a whirlwind so like we had i think we had one shoot around together so we kind of like didn't really we didn't really know each other yet i would say we haven't had any practices or any like yeah like any bonding you know oh, so it's like wow. we didn't really i i don't think we even knew each other's names like they knew each other obviously because they play club together all the time but it's like i didn't know like i'm just like the new random like who's the random white girl they put in like Oto, like, we thought she was going to be Ugandan, probably. They're like, who's this? I'm sure it was like that. But everyone, like I said, everyone's so warm and welcoming. Like, I just feel like they took me under, like, Flash is our captain. She, I feel like she just took me under her wing right away and just, like, brought me around everyone, made sure, like, I was always with them, eating with them, you know, like, not ever by myself on the side. So I just, I really appreciate her for that because yeah. she could have been like, who's this white girl? Like, we don't want her. We don't need her, you know? Yeah. She was like, I feel like it was, she was a big part of like how welcoming everyone was and just how how well we gelled so quickly after that. Mm -hmm. It's due to her. Well, yeah. that's awesome. Because like, Uganda was, is known as the Pearl of Africa and you're definitely the Pearl of this team. I mean, like no little bit of pun intended because <laughs> what you look like, but... At the same time, <laughs> you brought the energy, you brought the warmth, and it was so amazing, you know, to hear your story, you know, you know, you know, fighting against diabetes, playing with diabetes, but then also having this amazing energy. Every time you spoke on the microphone, you know, you, you had the smile on, and like I said, those pictures I saw too, you put like a silly face, but it shows that who you are, but then on the court, you're all about business. Now, 
from what I know, you're in Spain. Are you on a different team now, or what's going on with that? Yeah, I'm playing for Vambiri. It's in the top league in Spain, so super excited for that. We start playing actual games next weekend, so mm -hmm. should be exciting. Um, it's a great league and just great competition, so okay. should be exciting. All right. <laughs> um, Arnold uh, Mugabe just says, if it wasn't 2 a.m. in Uganda, the views would be flowing in like crazy because everyone's <laughs> asleep or partying right now. We are supporting you, Jenna. We love you, Jenna. So... <laughs> You have a fan base in Africa. With, <laughs> this is shots fired. So we do stuff. We don't curse or anything like that. But we say some of the, the real things. For a white girl to be praised so much in Africa <laughs> is something to be proud of. Because not only, because I remember when I, I joked around you, I said, yo, you about the culture. Because everyone out there, I'm going to say this. I was like, yo, man, you ready? She was like, bet that. I'm like, What's bet? <laughs> That's what you saying. I was like, nah, you just ask bet. California people. Yeah, I'm from the East Coast. See, this is when we go back and forth. See, I'm East Coast. You West Coast, okay? Okay, you just California come on. California say bet that for sure. Nine yeah. times out of ten, bet that. <laughs> bet that? Okay. Biggie, Tupac, all right? Difference. No. All right. <laughs> but you also recognize, you said, no, I'm, I'm a white girl that happened to go to Uganda, again, from a blessing, but then also loved the culture, supported the culture, and changed the game because I'm pretty sure now they're going to want to call you back because you're a registered citizen. So my next question, because I know I don't know how this works. So can you go back to Uganda whenever you want? Is it like a lifelong citizenship or is it like temporary? Mine is on my, it's for my passport. I think my passport now is like six years. Oh, wow. So hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll extend me because <laughs> I love them so much, but who knows? We'll see how it goes. Maybe if I do bad, they'll be like, nah, we need someone else get her out of here. Homie, but, you um, ain't never going to be bad. Don't give me that. You know, you're going to be great. <laughs> now, again, um, this has been, again, I learned so much about you and you know, what you're doing is so inspirational. I really hope other little girls and even grown women, you know, take your blueprint and use it saying, hey, you had a dream. And what I loved about it was that you didn't give up on it. You said you want to represent your country, unable to do it. But you found a country and you jumped on that challenge and succeeded. And I really want to give you your flowers when it comes to that, because that's scary. That's scary from you coming from the U.S., then going to a different country to play basketball, and then just diving in another team, like you said, land a plane, straight plane, to try to get them to go to the Olympics, and then almost getting there. I mean, you got silver. That's just one more game. You would have got gold. And I really, really can't even sometimes put the words, again, me listening to you, knowing who you are and what you're doing for the Bass community. It's just fantastic. Um, I just want to know, is there any quotes that you live by that helps you succeed or get you through the day um, that just gives you inspiration? You put me on the spot. You had to, you had to ask this before. I would have got you a good one. You know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just try to stay in the present. I don't know, mm. stay grounded in the present, not focus on the future and just... Mm what is it the like life happens in the present so that's like my biggest i'm always trying to live by that not to think ahead or think about the past like oh i missed a shot i missed it i just think about the present what you can do now that's like you control you know that's like my biggest life motto <laughs> homie that was perfect a jen and auto life lives in the present right there three that words life lives, no. life lives in the present <laughs> that's awesome um and also you got people from Uganda that's gonna watch this um, after this. And I, I wanna give you your soapbox. Um, is there anything you wanna say to them after you know what you've been through, what you experienced, even people at home? This is your time to say whatever you want, if it's a thank you or just something inspirational to the people that have been supporting you since you started your journey uh, with basketball. So you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, shout out to all the Ugandan fans, honestly. like. Well, I don't know what we do without them. I feel like they're like our sixth man. I always say that, like they're cheering the loudest for us all the time. Like, um, I just, I'm so, I'm still hurt about um, Afro Basket and moving to Rwanda. I really think if Jane and they doesn't get hurt, we can win that game. So that's like yeah. my biggest, like low right now. So I'm just really excited to see what we can do at the next one or next qualifiers and just, really excited for the team because I think we have so much potential and just how young we are and how 
just everything i just feel like we have a very good like upward trajectory going so just mm. I don't know, I'm very excited and just, I want to keep coming back and just yeah. see the fans again and see their faces and <laughs> yeah, I just can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's going to be great. And now the last question I have, and then we want to actually do something really quick. When you were in Uganda, did you learn any of the dialects or languages over there? Like they, they, they speak Bantu <laughs> and uh, I think Nilotic. Did you ever learn any phrases over there or no? Um, a little Luganda, but I only know a few words. Like I know Webeles, thank you, and uh, Benange is like, dang type of stuff. <laughs> Benange. Um, <laughs> and Vicky's always calling me weapon. It's like weapon too. It's like when you're like a show off kind of, because okay. like, we're always putting like lip gloss on for the game and just like making it, making sure we look good. She was always calling like uh, Lydia, Jane, and I that. So just a few words. They're trying to try to count, but now I forgot. I, I really want to take lessons. That's like oh. my next goal because I feel like it would be really cool to learn it and just. Oh, I don't know. Useful, you know, that I can hear what they're saying. <laughs> no, please do that because I love when another culture knows another language and it's like a yeah. complete surprise. Like when random. I see it, yeah. random, like yeah. when you say John and Otto, everybody thought you were black. When they see Vince Chang, they think I'm Asian. So when I show up, they're like, oh, uh, <laughs> I think you got the wrong one. And then when I hear Asians not speak Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, yeah. or whatever. Like when I hear like a Chinaman speak French, it's like looking what? at a dog and then hearing it meow. <laughs> You're like, yo, yeah, this, it's unexpected. This doesn't go. So please learn that, um, uh, I mean, Yeah, uh, you do. Um, Michael. so I don't want to hold so much of your time. This was a great interview. I'm gonna definitely send it to you. I'm just gonna actually do one thing. This is usually the sign off for all our guests. Okay. All you're gonna say is your name, and this is shots fired. So like, this is Jen Auto. This is shots fired. And then that's okay. it. You can go and finally go to sleep because I know you got to rest and you got games. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this is Jan Auto, and this is Shots Fired. <laughs> da -da -da -da! She got it. Hey, look, the <laughs> Wi-Fi gods got us through the entire interview. <laughs> You're amazing. Please keep me in contact. I'll send you some more messages yeah. for other possible dates. And I'm going to teach you more different okay. slangs. Like, um, yeah, oh, I can't you, say these words. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. <laughs> yeah. Keep it Thank a buck, so like, much. keep it a buck, all right? You that's, were awesome. That's keep easy. It a buck. <laughs> all right, I'll see you Thank later, you. Thank you. Thank yeah, have a good night. Oh, man, we got through the interview. I'm so happy you don't understand because what happened was we didn't know what was going to happen. We had no idea because what I know and what you know is that our thing was going back and forth. But now we're back at it again, and this is why we love Shots Fired. All right, y'all. It's time to get this going on. Um, we're going to go through the channel really quick because I'm looking at everybody that was in there. Sorry if I ignored any of y'all. Who's in the chat? All right, here we go. We got from Canada, should have been ranked higher than Sinks after the World Cup. That's my opinion. I think so too. Um, the Boa trade, yo, I'm about to talk about the Chris Paul trade. We're going to talk about that. That's insane. Uh, then also we kept talking about Uganda. It's great. My man elites in the house. I would agree. However, FIBA's rank point system is also based on previous basketball tournaments and official FIBA games and events. Uh, but we're glad something's working. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be insane. I mean, the one thing I do know about is that the, the game has definitely changed all around the world. Uh, let me check also my people on Twitch. I gotta put that. Oh no, we gotta get that there. Okay. Let me get that dog. Let me get that dog. Okay, here we go. We got man Jason saying that KD combined would have been insane. And see so, I me mean, right now, it's crazy. Uh right. Oh, we had a whole bunch of people coming in. Oh man, I gotta get my chat going. Here we go. Stream manager. This is what happens when you go back and forth on TikTok and also on here we go that's all i like to see all right cool um sasha i think we gotta reset the video because i can't see myself um it's still frozen with the interview so we're just gonna reset that really quick all right here we go uh do i uh they, they did play for uganda yeah so if you're still going uh light flex that was jan and otto she did play for uganda she got citizenship which is insane oh yeah that's what we got it baby um she got citizenship which is insane uh, and then she played on the national team in which they were trying to go 
to the Olympics. They were trying to get one of those slots with the Olympics. And she did great. She really did well. And it's just that, you know, like I said, lost to Rwanda, lost to Egypt. Um, but she definitely has support. As you see the people there on YouTube, definitely showing the support, which, again, I, I can't ask for more. That's that's beautiful. Anyway, it's time to get this show going again. This is Shots Fired, episode 29, season two. We have 32 episodes all together, so we only got about a few more episodes left, about three. But now it's time to start it off. We always do. This right here is Talent Overload, and this is Shots Fired. Let's go. All right, after a fantastic game with Jan and Otto, now we're going to go to Town Overload, and let's just get right into it. All right, let's get people home because we want to get this going. Right here, this is Jordan Lewis, also known as Drifty J. Now, when I first saw this dude, I was back and forth of his methods, okay? His methods is that he goes to different gyms and produces really entertaining basketball content, but the way he does it, I'm back and forth because he will hijack AU games, men and women, okay, and pretend to be in high school when he's really 20 something years old. You know, he actually went to Texas Tech, which was interesting um, as, you know, as a quote unquote visit, but just as a baller. But he definitely is an entertaining person. I mean, this guy has over a million followers on TikTok and he's doing well on Instagram as well with over 113,000. Now, this guy is 20, but can low key ball. Like his pranks are weird, but this guy's nice. Like he actually went to an elite college camp um, and tried to try out just to get on a team. And he got, from what I hear, from what I hear, a coach did approach him, you know, to come to the school. So I don't know if he got a D1 offer, but a coach did approach him and say, yo, where are you playing at? And want him to play. I mean, this guy is really representing the West Coast well. But the thing about this is that I try to do research on it. And with a kid named like Jordan Lewis, it's literally harder than finding a needle in the Atlantic Ocean after a hurricane. Like there's so many different, I found a Jordan Lewis in Europe. I found a Jordan Lewis at the Tuskegee University. There's even a Jordan Lewis in the WNBA who plays on the Connecticut Suns. I could not find a lot of information on you, bro. But Jiffy J is definitely a content creator that's changing the game, which I also want to talk about that. Y'all been watching you know, people on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and whatever, just making money and being successful doing the thing they love. Like people like The Professor did that, Krista Jackson, you know, Jamon Finn, uh, Tristan Death. Like you don't have to be in the NBA to be successful like this. And they're definitely just putting something that people want to see and just make it fun. Now he took it to another level because you know, his pranks are insane. Well, also I found out something else about him. I did not know mustard helps with cramps. Did anybody else know that? Did anyone else know that mustard helps with cramps? Okay. Because what happens is when you get cramps, it's shortage of um, acetic acid. And then all of a sudden um, there's something called acetylcholine that is produced by the acetic acid and which is essential for leg muscle contractions. But mustard is effective because it actually contains acetic acid, which I did not know. So he was eating mustard when he was cramping up. I did not know at all. With the shifts, yes, man, shifty, bro. Man is shifty. Um, but yeah, like a shout out to this man. I mean, this this guy is nice and is doing something for the bat. He really is. I mean, 20 years old, trying his best to be positive. He's actually in a couple of leagues that has a lot of young people, you know, definitely competing. And and again. This guy's cool. He's also trying to, you know, replicate Steph Curry when Steph Curry did it five times. You ain't gonna do it five times, bro. He's just gonna do it once. But again, would love to have him on the show. Drifty J, you do got my, you know, got my respect. You know, you got my respect. Definitely wanna see what you're gonna do in the future. I actually want you to play college ball because I wanna see if you can actually really ball. Understand with all your deals and stuff, you probably don't wanna risk yourself, but be honest, I wanna see what you can do in the competition, all right? But anyway, that was Drifty J right there on Talent Overload. Shout out to you, bro. Hope to talk to you soon. All right, let's keep the show going. Next is breaking news, and you already know we're going to talk about the World Cup is done, and the champion was a little unexpected. Not a lot, but let's talk about it. Breaking news and shots fired. Let's go. All right, here we go. Let's not get disappointed. Let's keep it flowing. Right here on Shots Fired, let's get it with the FIBA World Cup. Now, last week, we left you with an eager and excited FIBA World Cup semifinal matchup, and they did not disappoint. Soviet went up against Canada, and Bogdan Badovic brought the boom with 23 points, pushing his nation past Canada 95 to 86 to get to the finals. And it was unbelievable. But then what happened? Oh, Germany. 
Germany then went against the United States and won 113 to 111, which is insane. But Dennis Schroeder was Dennis the Menace again with 19 points and nine dimes. But we all know who's one of the craziest players of the tournament. That man right there, Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards, led the way in the red, white, and blue. And there was no Brandon Ingram, by the way, due to the illness. We have to talk about that. But man, but you could say they went home. And then what happened in the 2023 FIBA World Cup? It was Germany up against Serbia. And Germany had a ball up from Brunswick and turned the game around. Again, once again, Dennis the Menace, Dan Schroeder put on a show. Former Los Angeles Laker with 28 points and the match man added 19. It was insane. Germany became the world champs and first ever in their history. And it was crazy back because they took home back like in 2002 which was great but that was a bronze finish but man i'm proud of germany they really balled out but speaking of bronze medals the usa had themselves a north american clash it was canada versus usa for third place and it could be the birthplace of basketball we really go home empty-handed back to the back world cup usa what are you doing baby come on you bet they could not uphold this whole status of being the king canada came out and balled out went to overtime 127 118 which one of the craziest foul shot plays i've ever seen by mikhail bridges you know missing the foul shot and then getting a rebound and going in the corner was insane but what happened is there was a hero amongst the united states but there was a villain and that right there was dylan brooks he was the ultimate villain which is crazy he has bragging rights taking home that bronze he had 39 points that was the gift for him that put the first ever world cup medal and with shea gillis alexander notching another 31 points in addition 12 dimes insane i mean he took the podium and also Dylan Brooks was defensive player like of the whole tournament, which is great. But here we go. Dennis Schroeder took home the MVP shot this man. Well-deserved reward taking this team all the way to the goal. And Schroeder definitely surprised us by, not didn't surprise us, but the all-star five with that man, Luka Doncic. Also, SGA was on the all, you know, star team. Wagner Vagnovich, as you can see, and also can't not give it to Anthony Edwards. I mean, that, are you serious? That's a bomb lineup. I would love to see that, you know, in NBA 2K. 24 and i'm starting to play man the shot stick is crazy but what an incredible tournament overall upsets showcases so much surprises and then also exceptional basketball now germany are still likely celebrating as we speak right now whereas the united states are definitely trying to put something together which we were talking about this okay hearing about you know two other people you know going to be on it lebron and curry so we're going to talk about it later i mean the one thing i do know is that now I want to hear no excuses. Right there, that was Mikel Bridges' crazy three to put them in overtime. So we all can talk about how the United States says we didn't put, you know, our top team. But what makes me laugh is that if we won, would we have that conversation still? That's that that that's that's always gonna be it. I, I said this in a post, and you can follow me, Vince Chang21 on Instagram. We're at America's not a dominant force in America when it comes to basketball. Because who was our last four MVPs or five MVPs? Not American, okay? Cameroon, you know, uh, Serbia, and Greece. You know, we're getting imported these players and they're doing a lot better than us, period. They just are. So is it America's part being dominant? I mean, yeah, the country's just got to get the balls, but we're proving that we lost. But you keep saying, oh, it was the B team. It was the B team. Okay, let's see what happens with the A team now. Because you do know people are going to get even hungrier. So now there's another notch on the Americans, you know, it's, a, it's another weight on the Americans back. None of that, another weight in the Americans back because people now can see a God can bleed. Now, yeah, you didn't play against LeBron, you didn't play against Curry, you didn't play against quote unquote Anthony Davis, you didn't get to play against Jimmy Butler. Okay, cool, I get it. But now it's curious to see, are they gonna be the dream team? Because bro, they still lost, just like Fast and Furious. Even you lose by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. So anyway, let's real quick. Uh, mustard sales are going to ramp up. And what a birthday present for Schroeder's 30th birthday. You are absolutely right, Elite. Absolutely right. Happy birthday to that man. All right, let's keep it going because, you know, we're on Twitch and we got to talk about this. NBA 2K24 is out. Your man got it. It's right here on my Xbox One. Still trying to figure it out. Just, it's definitely laggy. It's a laggy game. But let's talk about NBA 2K right here on Shots Fire. Let's go. All right, let's talk about this because this was actually an interesting setup. I think last week we did Le 
LeBron and Curry. This was Kyrie and Curry. Play this real quick. YouTuber Fuzio slot the careers of Steph Curry and Kyrie Irving in NBA 2K, which was quite interesting because if Kyrie Irving did not start, you know, basically in Cleveland and he started on the Warriors, but then opposite Kyrie started on Cleveland. That's going to be interesting. So let's talk about this. In Kyrie's first two seasons, he's in the Golden State Warriors between 2009 and 2011. He only averaged about 15 points and six assists. Now, with no help of Clay, don't forget, Clay didn't come to 2011, Draymond not to 2012, and even Andre Dallas in 2013. They went to the finals, placed the Cavs, but then lost, but then won in 2014, which is crazy. You know, as a rookie, if, you know, Curry went to Cleveland in 2011, 2012, he nearly averaged 30 points with nine assists, wins rookie of the year, and basically is one of the best players on his team. Now, there's no LeBron until 2014. So Curry's by himself for two years. Think about that. Two years, he's by himself because LeBron goes you know, to Miami. He leaves and comes back, right? Which, by the way, can we talk about this? Chris Paul is on Golden State Warriors. I know, like, we didn't get to talk about it, like, last week. But Chris Paul on the Golden State Warriors is insane. It's, it's insane. I think uh, trading Jordan Poole, because Jordan Poole is getting a little too full of himself. But to have CP3 with Clay Thompson, with Draymond Green, and with Steph Curry, that's, it's like a Kate, it's like a Kevin Durant. But you get a point guard instead of a big man. That's going to be interesting. Okay. But anyway. Saying that Kyrie made the playoffs in the first time, 2012, 2000, uh, 2011, 2012, he averages to improve to 22.5 a game and then also seven assists. Following the Warriors went 21 and 61 to finish the last place in Western Conference. Steph and the Cleveland missed the playoffs too. All right, now they missed the playoffs again in 2013, 2014, but LeBron now has returned to Cleveland in 2014. So it teams up with Steph, which is actually quite interesting. I would have loved to see that matchup right there. That would have been insane. Now they went 70 and 12 in the next season to finish the first in the East. Kyrie and Golden State made the playoffs, but they were eliminated in the first round. Curry and LeBron went to win the championship together. Curry's first championship. I bet. 2015-2016, Kyrie and the Warriors finished second in the West. But both Kyrie and Curry meet in the NBA Finals. And Cleveland going back to back winning another championship. Two championships now for Curry. It's insane what you know, people do in their free time and like really made this storyline, which I'm very impressed. I'm highly impressed. Good job. Now, Durant now joins the Warriors 2016, 2017, and now the Warriors and Cavs Finals yet again. And the Cavs went 3 1, but the Warriors forced a game seven, and the Cavs will then have a blowout win with the three beat. So now Curry has three championships. In 2007, 2018, Curry leaves the Cavs to join the Celtics. Now, this will be kind of interesting. Kyrie's still on the Golden State Warriors, messing it up, definitely trying to keep the, 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 the pride alive. But then also what happens? Durant leads going to net, and then Curry goes to the Nets, as you saw. The Curry goes to the Nets 2023, and Kyrie and the Warriors separate continuous players, heartbreaks, and he would continue never to win a championship. So zero as for Curry, the Nets, they won 2020, 2021. So that brings Curry four titles and Kyrie with zero. Which, by the way, if y'all know ball, Kyrie played on Duke. Seth Curry transferred to go to Duke as well and played with Kyrie when he was a sophomore. Just imagine both the Currys playing for Mike Krzyzewski. Bro. JJ Redick, your record, gone. Like, gone. Like, that would have been. And so JJ Redick has that, that record of three points in Duke. Bro, Steph and Seth? Whew. Gives me chills. Gives me chills. I would love to see it. All right, let's keep it going. Okay, hold on a second. Elite says the USA team. Was great in scoring, but definitely needed some more adjustments in defense for those last games. And that's another argument I'm going to tell people. Just because you put a lot of firepower on a squad doesn't necessarily you're gonna win games. Oh, what about the dream team? The dream team also had some of the top defensive players in the game. Like, think about that, bro. Think about that. Michael Jordan. Defensive player of the year. Even Charles Barkley, David Robinson. Like, they had rim protectors, too. Big difference. Big difference. All right. Anyway, we're going to go to the next segment here on Shots Fired. And this is the FIBA story. And we know we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the USA. But anyway, this is FIBA story and Shots Fired. Let's get it. All right. 
here we go. Let's play. I got you. 2023 FIBA World Cup has changed the game, and it's been insane. Now, we're talking the next level when it comes to drama and talent of display and fan engagement. Now, we're not just going to talk about the USA. We're going to talk about the world because all around love for basketball has increased, and the World Cup was one of the first to be held in multiple countries. And it was a success. Fans in the Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, all guys experienced the very best. And right there at the Philippine Arena, even managed to set up new attendance record for the FIBA World Cup with 38,115 hoop heads showing up watching the opening day game. Now, it can only fit about 55,000, but damn, that is still impressive. Now, the previous indoor record was 32,616, which was way back in 1994 when the USA grabbed the gold in the World Championship, uh, called, also called the infamous Dream Team 2 in Canada. Shaquille O'Neal was on that team. And the tournament was won by the Dream Team 2, which was insane. But one thing is that I love that because they definitely beat Greece very high, 78 to 60, and which, which Greece also got the bronze medal. But here's the thing, Shaquille O'Neal was on that team. Dominique Wilkin, also one of the best you know, shooters to ever do it, Reggie Miller. And that was basketball magic, if you can remember that. Now, this is a time a whole heap of Filipino fans in attendance to see their home nation take on the Dominican Republic, which was a thriller in North of Manila, which is great, I love that. Okay, and over in Okinawa, the FIFA World Games averaged over 85% occupancy. Yo, Japanese got it. Total attendance for the tournament expected to stretch over 700,000 people, 700,000 for this tournament. Man, it's it just the figures on the ground level, which was insane. The people in the stands, everywhere. Wherever it was, it was worldwide and also went on the World Wide Web, in which the FIBA social media accounts gained over 2 million new followers. Shout out to FIBA, all right? And that's over 10 billion impressions when it comes to, sorry, where's my check? I'm joking. So 10 billion impressions. Now double down I made when that happened to the last World Cup in 2019. All right, the improvement is staggering. Now, we're talking about Victor Wembanyama in his team's level of growth, which is insane. But this tournament also saw plenty of changes from the players behind the scenes and from the dedicated players' lounges to the barbershops and the hotels. You know, FIBA definitely puts ends up because this man, the legendary Dirk Nowitzki, who isn't just one of the best to ever do it, but he also serves as the chairman of the Players' Commission, made visits to the hotel and offered up his expertise and feedback to ensure improvements that were made during the tournament. And when you put that all together with the awesome play in the court, the excellent and exciting and perfection of the teams was able to have their way and definitely give the fans what they want. Now, some of these teams were able to qualify for next year's Summer Olympics, which is going to be fantastic. And it's really no wonder why people are calling this year's tournament the greatest FIBA World Cup of all time. That statement is true. It's hard to argue with. And I'm telling you, the best part is it's just going to get better and better. <laughs> Shout out to FIBA. Shout out. What's up, Pablo? What's good? Shout out to FIBA. I really, really liked it. Okay. All right. So now we got the last segment of the show. And this is a worldwide court. And you know what? We're putting a country to court. So you know what? Let's just get in. Worldwide corner shots fired. Let's go. Now, Elite says, congrats if you for giving 50,000 to all 32 teams that played at the World Cup an extra 100K to the top. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. FIBA gave over $50,000 to all 32 teams that played in that World Cup and an extra 100,000 to the top 16 teams. Yo, FIBA got money, bro. Yo, Sasha, we got to ask for a raise. Let's do that, all right? We're going to ask for it. We going to oh man, that's what I'm talking about. Yo, BMW says, oh, it's a little late to the party. No, we still got one more segment. But me, yo, me and my boy, man, yo, we, we, we don't get that money, son. We don't get that money. It might be in yen, so I don't know how much they're going to give us. But anyway, worldwide court right here in Shots Fired. And know what? We're going to bring the USA to the stand. All right, let's go right now. The USA crashed out of the 2023 FIBA World Cup. It makes their second straight World Cup tournament without a medal. And guess what? How do they bounce back? How do they reestablish the global dominance that they have of the game? More importantly, where did it all go wrong? Are the players to blame? Are the coach to blame? Okay, United States team has admittedly not made up for, you know, 
a lot of things. For example, they said it wasn't about their best stars. They said that they could have offered a little bit more. But guess what? People like this guy, Steph Curry, said, hey, I'll play for them. Hey, LeBron James said, hey, I'm going to play something. KD says, hey, no, I'm going to be there for Olympics and also Jason Tatum. Now, here's the thing. The U they also had some all-stars, okay? This team had Anthony Edwards, okay? Yeah, they also had, you know, Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. And also they had Tyrese Hallenbergen and also a dope point guard, you know, Jalen Brunson that we saw a little bit before. Again, that is four amazing all-stars, which is curious because USA Basketball really wants to take an entire team of all-star calibers. They could, but they didn't. So is it as simple as a major mistake with the team selection? Or is it a deeper problem? Now, United States team only started practicing together in August, bro. That's only like a couple of days, all right? And then they began group stage on the 26th of the same month. So the red, white, and blue walked it. Like they just walked in and say, hey, yo, you know what? They're going to be cruising the victory, which they did cruise in a couple of, you know, stage, but winning each of their group stages games by an average of 34 points versus New Zealand, you know, versus Greece and Jordan. And they, they actually never stood a chance ever. And in the second round, a whole disappeared. And when they went against, you know, basketball steep as shit. I mean, this is what happened. I mean, that basketball steady shift. Lithuania was insane. Okay, Lithuania was a problem. Okay, they had they had some great ballers, but Germany was the one that was real challenge. I mean, I always said they need a challenge because Dennis Schroeder, Franz Wagner, Daniel Thesis, and um, Isaac uh, Bogna was insane. Lithuania was a problem too. As I said, you know, um, Jonas um, Valanciunas, you know, turned up the heat, and that was the only NBA player on that Lithuanian team. But I'm telling you, he balled. And they shot the ball like prime Golden State Warrior fashion, Splash Bros, all right? And then expose the defense shortcomings of the multiple All-Stars. Now, what happens? They go past Italy, you know, they beat them as well, you know, which is crazy. But even Triple J, you know, the reigning defensive player of the year, couldn't go against Lithuania. And then all of a sudden, they got trumped. Okay, cool, whatever. Now, what happened is, like I said, destroyed Italy, went against Montenegro, okay, whatever, whatever. And then they looked, of course, for the medal. But in the semifinals, as I said before, Dennis Schroeder, Franz Wagner, was just a reminder that, look, Germany is nice. And they went unbeaten. And they said, we're going to take you out. The devastating loss to Germany meant no chance for gold or silver for the USA. And then they had the chance for the redemption by claiming the bronze. Huh. Now, what happens is that is that you have to watch who's playing on these international teams and saying, yo, you got to be careful. I mean, they couldn't get any medal. And that's what happened, period. And then what happens? They go against camp. Now, here's the thing. LeBron James says so. he's going to commit to the Olympic Games now. Okay, cool. Which is he's seemingly recruiting the biggest names in basketball to help restore the reputation of the United States for the world tournament. Or oh, is pretty concerned of what's going to happen. I mean, that's what we want to talk about. Why didn't the best go? Because of contracts, because of this, because of that. Because they didn't want to go, period. But they thought, hey, this team could take it. But guess what? They didn't. I mean, at this moment, it's someone like, I don't know. This guy's been talking for a minute. Noah Lyles, this guy right here, he's a track runner. He said some truth. He said, yo, we keep saying we're the world champions. Bro, we're in the USA. We're the world? That's just North Carolina, South Carolina, Minnesota, Florida, and Texas. I mean, LeBron says he's going to come in. Steph Curry and other people are going to step up to change the whole now uh, stain on the United States because they couldn't take the World Cup. But again, we always beat our chest. And I've been saying it for a very long time. The world is going to catch up. There's a reason why I love FIFA. And you know, maybe I'm working with FIFA. It's because I give credit credits due. We import a lot of our talent. Now, am I saying that we do not have talent in the United States? I am not saying that at all. But I'm saying is that we got to stop being all big and bad if we ain't going to send our best. Because then when we lose, it just sounds like excuses. That's what it sounds like. Doesn't sound like we're the best no more. Sounds like we're being little girls. I got to say that again because, you know, in this world. It sounds like we're not owning up to what we're about. Because at the end of the day, if you're the best, you should be able to send your D team, your F team, your G team, and still wipe the floor. But we didn't. We lost. When you're the king, you got to forever protect your crown. If you know about Game of Thrones, Lannisters will always pay their debt, but they never back down. The Starks always on defense. 
all right? And if you walk down that wall and them white walkers are coming and you haven't even seen them from years, you still make sure that wall is running. You still make sure your defenses are ready to go because at the end of the day, it can happen at any time in any place. And that's what the United States failed to do. You thought y'all can walk in and win. And guess what happened? You didn't. Granted, you didn't send your best, but why didn't you? Send a message. A World Cup every four years, bro. Olympics every four years, bro. You know it's coming. So stop. Now we're going to see what's going to happen in the future. Because now the whole world is watching. Extra two million followers, baby. Extra two million followers on people. So we watching, you would say. If I love being in the United States. I'm not going to say I don't. I love you. Anyway. That was a dope. That was a dope show. Hey, we love FIBA. Yes, we do love FIBA. Thank you, everybody that joined in. Shout out to, you know, all the teams that participated in the World Cup. I'm going to shout out to South Sudan. Definitely did that. They definitely showed out. Um, the Bahamas is doing real good. I really hope they qualify for the Olympics. Um, get out to Uganda. Well, Ugandans, uh, Jan and Otto, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're amazing. Your story is so inspirational. And as you say, uh, live life in the present. That's it. Live life in the present. That's all you got to do. Um, and also, Drifty J, doing your thing, keep being a content creator. So we only got about three more shows left. Um, I think we're going to go live next Friday as well. But, again, just keep in tune on my social media, Vince Chang 21. All y'all have been dope for coming through. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Season two has been uh, absolutely inspirational. I learned a lot about so many different countries when it comes to basketball. Shout out to Jelly Smack. And also shout out to my man. And if I'm trying to be a Jedi, he's definitely my master. I'm a pattern one. My man, Sasha Buckets Buenos, right behind the scenes. So anyway, thank you all for joining in. And we'll see you next week. Peace out.